Before we begin, I want to express my deepest condolences to the people of Turkey and Syria and everyone else affected by these horrible earthquakes. And I also want to ask you not to believe this anti-Russian propaganda. Russian people, we do care about you. We think about you. You are in our thoughts and prayers. So I wish you all the best, fastest recovery, and I hope that's not gonna happen again. And now let's begin with the video. The Western weapons are getting closer and closer to Ukraine, and today another extremely important thing was announced, is that Ukraine might potentially receive military jets. At the same time, the insanity around Bakhmut continues, but we might potentially have the very earliest signs that Ukraine might launch its own counteroffensive soon. And to make things worse for Russians, there is confirmed activity of Ukrainians on the territory of Russia, and not just anyone, but the special forces. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And our first picture comes to us from one of the bookstores in Moscow, where we can see the modern maps of Russia, which do include these illegally annexed territories of Ukraine, including Kherson, Zaporozhye, Luhansk and Donetsk and obviously Crimea. And I mean, I hope they did not print too many of these maps, because most likely next year they'll have to reprint them once again. Next we have a picture of a fully Ukrainian-made drone called Spire, and one of its main responsibilities will be to intercept Iranian drones Shahid. Then we go to Germany, specifically to the city of Dresden, and as you can see right here, German tanks Leopard are being transported allegedly closer to the border with Poland, so that in the future they'll be delivered to Ukraine. If you remember, Germany already pledged both of its Leopards 1 and Leopards 2 tanks, and right here, for example, we have the comparison between these combat machines. And among the main advantages of Leopard 2 above Leopard 1 is that it is almost twice powerful and its range is 5 kilometers instead of 3 kilometers of Leopard 1. And by the way, I was able to find even more videos about these tanks, and one of them is almost 13 minutes mini documentary. And it pretty much explains in details all the characteristics and capabilities of these tanks. And as always, if you want to see the full version, I uploaded these videos in addition to other footage to my Patreon. The link will be down below, and there is still one week of free access. In addition to that, Germany also pledged two more anti-aircraft tanks called Gepard. But besides that, another extremely important event happened today, which involves the potential delivery in the future of extremely crucial military vehicles, which are military planes. So this whole thing started with President of Ukraine Vladimir Zelensky arriving to the United Kingdom and meeting the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Later on, Zelensky went to the Buckingham Palace and he gave a speech. And among the most important statements, President Zelensky was thanking the Western countries, especially the United Kingdom, which was among the very first countries which helped to Ukraine's rescue. But Zelensky was also emphasizing that this assistance was a preventative kind, which basically means Ukraine was just protecting itself at its territories, not planning to attack Russia. After that, Zelensky was also asking for more weapons, because Ukraine still has to protect itself and repel the assaults of Russians. And later on, the president gave this military helmet, which is used by Ukrainian air forces, to one of the representatives of UK parliament. And he asked for the military planes, which will be crucial crucial for final Ukrainian victory. After his speech in Buckingham Palace, Zelensky went to meet the King Charles. They also had some things to talk about, but this discussion was away from press. And ultimately, Zelensky once again met with the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in the military base Lulward, where Prime Minister announced that UK will be supplying its tanks Challenger 2 to Ukraine as early as in a couple of months. In addition to that, the United Kingdom also promised to increase its trade of Ukrainian pilots and sailors. And later on, during the press conference, Rishi Sunak, whenever answering about the question whether UK will provide fighter jets to Ukraine, he said that 
nothing is off the table. At this very moment the United Kingdom is not yet ready to send planes to Ukraine, but they are discovering the possibilities, such as for example Rishi Sunak asked the Ministry of Defense which exactly planes United Kingdom can supply to Ukraine. And to sum up this whole meeting, the President Zelensky said, let's make it so it's not Ukraine thinking when and where Russians will attack, let's make it the opposite, so Russians will be thinking about this problem. Later that day, Zelensky also went to France to meet its President Emmanuel Macron and the Chancellor of Germany Olaf Scholz. And the next destination is supposed to be Belgium. And ultimately, the leaders of the European Union announced that they might discuss whether they will also be sending their own fighter jets to Ukraine during February 9th. 10th summit. So pretty much yes, as you can see, it just got very serious for Russia. Now they pretty much have no other choice other than to attack with whatever they have or be risking to be crushed by Ukrainians using western weapons. And obviously none of these scenarios are good for Russia, with both of them leading to a high probability defeat. The war as we know it right now might be over by the end of this year, and I will be here every single day to report to you on whatever is happening. And just if you don't want to miss any of these updates, just please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how live outside of YouTube. Alright, and now let me give you a brief update from the East, this Bakhmut insanity, and then a couple more words about the earliest signs of Ukraine's counteroffensive. But first of all, right here is the video from Kharkov, where as a result of a Russian attack, a central park has been severely damaged. Next we go to Kriminna, where according to Ukrainian sources, Russians increase the intensity of their assaults, but all of them so far are being repelled by Ukrainians. As we go down to Solidar, Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy a couple artillery pieces of Russian forces. And at the same time, a military base of Russians has been destroyed in the outskirts of the eastern side of Bakhmut. But Russians, they continue to bring everything they have to try to advance closer to this city. And as for now, unfortunately, they do small gains daily, but at huge life costs. Ukrainians report that Russians, they still use the prehistoric tactics when they just try to win battles with the numbers of people. And because they keep sending waves after waves of Russian attacks, hundreds of Russian soldiers are reportedly being eliminated every single day. And using these tactics, Russians were able to establish the significant fire control over this MO3 highway to the north of Bakhmut. And right now it looks like that their top priority will be to capture this western highway which leads directly inside the city. Because of this, the majority of Russian attacks, they come from the southwest of Bakhmut and also frontal attacks to the east of this city. And since Russians are getting relatively successful in Krasnohora, there is a new direction which comes from the northeast. In addition to that, Russians are also reportedly trying to advance closer to Berhivka, and this is basically their attempt to try and encircle Bakhmut in the future. But so far, as you can see, despite all this insanity and never-ending attacks by Russians, the most important thing is that Bakhmut still stands. But what's even worse for Russians is that in fact there are the earliest signs about the potential upcoming Ukrainian counteroffensive around this area. And we will talk about this in a little bit more details, but first of all, let's take a look at this map, which shows us the changes in territorial control. And first of all, as you can see right here, Russians were able to advance closer to Avdiivka next to Vadyane and Opetne. And as we go to Bakhmut itself, we can see that Ukrainians, in fact, were able to take back a little bit back of its own land to the south of Pidhorodnye, but then, unfortunately, Russians were able to advance to the west of Krasnohora. But then we have a very interesting statement by the Russian infiltrator himself, Leonid Pasichnik, the head of so-called Luhansk region. And I just couldn't ignore it. And what he said is that according to his intelligence, Ukrainians assembled massive 
forces across Luhansk front line. This makes it even worse for Russians, because according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russia at this very moment does not have yet enough fire and manpower to launch its offensive. Right now it's pretty bad timing for Russians to attack, and especially because Kremlin always forces them to do this. They basically say, come on, you can do it, we believe in you, our generals said you are ready, so just do it. But no matter what the Russian authorities say, the regular Russian soldiers will still have to attack, most likely, because it's either they do it just like this with whatever they have, or they wait long enough until Ukraine receives all the Western weapons and then it will be impossible for them and Russia will be defeated. And then, according to the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Alexei Danilov, Russia in fact might attack from Zaporozhye and Kharkov regions. As you can see, Russia might potentially prioritize these two regions first, avoiding Luhansk. Which just in theory indirectly confirms the original statement by Leonid Pasichnik that Ukrainians have massive forces across Luhansk front lines. And even though this is yet another version of an upcoming Russian offensive, they will still most likely attack in the east. And obviously it is way too early to tell right now, but hypothetically we might see the very earliest signs of an upcoming Ukrainian counter-offensive. But wait, there is more. In addition to that, there has already been confirmed the combat activities on the territory of Russia. And specifically what I'm talking about is these attacks during last couple of months in Engels airfield, Bryansk, Kursk regions and obviously Belgorod. But then, according to the same Alexei Danilov, he said that Ukraine already has the weapons which are capable of attacking Russia. But obviously he does not mean attacking Russian civilian objects like some other countries do, what he primarily means attacking once again airfields, military bases and military vehicles and equipment. And then he also refers to the potential receivance by Ukraine of western military planes, which will also be used in the attacks against the Russian territory, if needed. But truly the most intriguing part is that the group of Ukrainian special forces has been reporting their activity also on the territory of Russia. And what I'm referring to here is this report by The Guardian magazine, which has been speaking with three representatives of these special forces. The first one is 23 years old Taras, then 21 years old Vladislav, and finally 39 years old commander Oleksiy. According to them, they are just a small part of a brotherhood battalion, which is independent volunteer unit, which is separate from the Ukrainian forces. But they obviously still cooperate with Ukrainian army and they exchange back and forth their intelligence data. And among their combat missions, which they have been talking about, was the destruction of the military equipment in Belgorod region and also targeting military vehicles of Russia. So, I mean, all these spontaneous explosions and fires that we see more and more in Belgorod recently might not be the results of this accidental smoking in inappropriate places after all. And lastly, even though they are not fully uncovering their identity, they want the Russian government to know that they are present on the territory of Russia. And the main reason for this is to show the Russian authorities how easy it is to cross the border and sabotage them from behind. But pretty much yes, the month of February and especially March promises us to be full of combat activities. And just once again, if you don't want to miss any of these events as soon as they start happening, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. And if you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel member, use a PayPal link or become my Patreon, where there is still one week of free access. All the Asus links can be found on the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you tomorrow.